We're going to cover preventative maintenance on the Briggs Stratton Vanguard engine. What you see before you here is the 18 horsepower Vanguard. It'll be basically the same as the 16 horsepower. For our purposes, there will be no difference. Okay. First thing I want to cover with you is the air filter. This is your air filter cover. To inspect your air filter, what you should do every 25 hours, you simply release these latches on the top and lift it off. All right, set this to the side. You notice you have a foam pre-filter. You check for dirt on that. Then you take the wing nut that's down in the top, turning it counterclockwise, you remove it and lift the whole assembly out. Removing the pre-filter, you inspect the filter for cleanliness. If it's clean, you simply reinsert it. Replace the wing nut by turning it clockwise until it's snug. Do not over tighten this. If you do, it'll bow the interior of the carburetor and keep your choke from working. Then you inspect your pre-filter. If it's clean, you simply replace it. If the pre-filter is dirty, you clean it or replace it. If you're gonna clean it, you can't reuse it immediately because the way you'll clean it is to use soap and water and then blow it out with air and wait until it dries. When you start to install your new pre-filter, you will simply spray it lightly with WD-40 and wring it out in a towel or paper towel. Put your breather cover back on, put your catches in place and snap them over. You now have a clean air filter to work with. The next item we want to cover is the oil. It's important that you keep this oil clean and you check the level every eight hours. When you're starting off with a new engine, you should change your oil after five to eight hours of operation. That's your break-in oil. Then from that point on, <coughs> for light duty use, you change your oil every 50 hours of operation. For heavy duty use, which is what most power washers are used for, you change it every 25 hours of operation. Briggs recommends that you change your filter on every second oil change. I recommend you change it on every oil change. To check your oil, you simply remove your dipstick, wipe it clean, then reinsert it in the tube, press it down, then pull it out and check it. If you'll notice, when you look at your dipstick, you'll see a full mark, a line showing full right here. It's important that you do not overfill this. Overfilling it can cause seal damage to the engine. When it comes time to change your oil, it's quite simply done with the use of two wrenches. 
get you a drain pan, set it right here. Take your two wrenches, grasping the hose barb with one and the cap with the other, and unscrew that cap. When you get the cap unscrewed, the oil will then drain. In doing this, if you will remove your oil filler cap, which is located on the valve cover, wipe it off, set it up here where it'll be easy to find. After draining your oil, then you refill at this point right here. It takes approximately one and one half quarts to refill this engine. The type of oil that you should use <clears throat> depends on the atmosphere in which you're washing. If you're consistently operating at temperatures above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, then you use a 30 weight high detergent motor oil. If you're gonna consistently operate at temperatures below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, then you use a multigrade oil, like a 10W30 or a 5W30. The reason for using a multigrade oil when you're below 40 degrees Fahrenheit is a straight 30 weight will make the engine start more slowly and can cause damage to the cylinder walls because of improper lubrication. You can use a multigrade oil above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, but when you do, you have to check your oil more frequently. This being an air-cooled engine, it runs much hotter than your normal automobile engine does that's water-cooled. So it's gonna use more oil. Your oil will break down faster and it'll use more of it. If you want to use a synthetic oil, it has to meet Briggs standards, and you still have to change your oil at the same frequency, so there's precious little advantage in using a synthetic oil. Do not use any oil additives, period. Briggs tells you that if you do, it will void the warranty. When I say oil additives, you choose them. I'm not picking on anybody, but an oil additive might be STP oil treatment, it might be Marvel Mystery Oil, it might be Slick 50. Those are all oil additives. Do not use them. Okay?